Hello, everybody. I'm Rahul. I work on the Chrome team, and I'm very glad to be here. Welcome to the Mobile Web State of the Union. This session is all about the mobile web, what's been happening, what's coming up, demos, launches, case studies, stats, and a lot more. There's a lot happening here. But before we get into all that, let me take a moment to reflect on why I'm here, why I care about the mobile web, and why I think you all should as well. The web is amazing, and it's so familiar to us that sometimes we take it for granted. But just think about it. It's easy to discover web content through a search engine or just by sharing a link with a friend. And because everything is a link click away, it's very low friction to interact with the web. Just click a link. And the web works everywhere, from the earliest PCs and feature phones to the latest and greatest smartphones and tablets. There's one thing that all of these devices have in common. They have a web browser. The web has the broadest reach, by far, of any platform out there. But perhaps the best thing about the web is how it operates. It's completely open. New features, new functionality are added, debated, and discussed right there in the open. And the web is decentralized. No one owns it. Or rather, we all own it collectively. And it's our responsibility to be good stewards of the web platform. And we work collaboratively across all the different browser vendors to make sure we can uphold that responsibility. The web is one of the most amazing things ever invented. And Google loves the web. The web is great for users. The web is great for developers. And it's our mission on the Chrome team to move the web platform forward and to make you all, web developers, successful. That's what gets us motivated. That's what gets me out of bed every morning. That's why I'm up on stage. Now, the web is more important to users than ever before. Four years ago, Chrome had no presence on mobile at all. And just last month, Chrome crossed and grew to over 1 billion monthly active users on mobile alone. It's really amazing to see this kind of growth. Now, while the, mobile web is, uh, has, the growth of the mobile web has been phenomenal, we do have to remember that the, mobile, the web came of age when computing looked a little bit more like this. And some of you may be too young to remember the old school Google homepage. But most computing was done on these big, beefy desktop machines connected to an Ethernet cable, or if you want to get really old school, to a, to a modem. And then mobile came along and changed the rules of the game. These devices were small. They had less power. They had less memory. They had flaky networks. They had touch screens. Everything was different. And to figure out what would make a great mobile web experience, the web platform and mobile web browsers had to do a complete ground-up rethink. And I'm not talking about a few tweaks here or there. I'm talking about going back to first principles and figuring out what would make the mobile web awesome. And we believe the keys to a great mobile web experience rests on four pillars. First, accelerate the experience. Make everything fast. Make the page load fast make it scroll fast. That's what gets people in. And once people are in, provide an engaging experience, an immersive experience, a polished app experience. That's what gets people to stay. And once you have a fast, engaging experience, you're going to get a lot of visitors. The web does have broad reach, after all. And so the third pillar is to take all of those visitors and convert them into loyal users. This could be by having users sign up so you can personalize the experience. It could be by completing a transaction, or it could be some other flow. 
And then the final pillar for mobile web success is that once you have all of those users, you want to retain them. You want to re-engage with them and bring them back into the experience at the right time. These are all hard problems to solve, and solving them required many changes to the web platform and to mobile browsers. But this transformation is now largely complete. It is possible to build a mobile web experience that is fast, engaging, good at converting visitors into users, and good at retaining and re-engaging those users at the right times. We call such experiences progressive web apps. Remember back when Ajax completely changed what was possible on the desktop web? Progressive web apps are that same fundamental shift for the mobile web. And as you'll see, many people are already deploying progressive web apps and seeing success with them. And I hope that when you all leave Google I.O., all of you will go out and do the same. In other words, the mobile web is open for business. So let's dig into what that means. Speed is the killer feature. If you have your finger on a screen and you're trying to scroll and the page doesn't respond to your finger right away, it's a physically unpleasant sensation. We all know this intuitively. Responsive scrolling is not a nice to have feature, it's an absolute necessity. And there's data that backs this up. For example, Facebook did an experiment where they reduced uh, frame rates from 60 frames a second, which is smooth scrolling, to 30 frames a second, which is slow scrolling. And what they found was user engagement collapses. Speed matters. We do a lot of work in Chrome to make it easy for you to build smooth and fast experiences for your users. But sometimes we need your help. We need to work together to provide the best possible experience. For example, we recently launched Passive Event Listeners. This is an API that lets you, the web developer, provide hints to the browser about why you're listening for touch events. And using this API, the browser can do a better job of responding to scroll. And this can make a huge difference. I'm going to show you a video in a second, but just to tee it up, you'll see two phones side by side, both running CNN.com. The phone on the left, your left, does not have this API implemented. And the phone on the right does have this API implemented. And if you can roll the video, as you will see, as we start loading up both pages and scrolling, the phone on the left has noticeable lag between when I move my finger and the, when the page responds, whereas the phone on the right responds right away as I scroll my finger up the page. There's a huge difference in responsiveness. Now, I'm glad to say that CNN is rolling out this change to all of their users as we speak, so that's great news. If you can go back to slides. It's not only about scroll responsiveness. Studies have shown that 40% of users will abandon a web page if it takes longer than three seconds to load. And we want to make it easy for developers to build websites that are extremely fast. And that led us to create an open source project called Accelerated Mobile Pages, or AMP. And if you were here in the session before this, you've heard all about AMP. But the summary high-level view is this. AMP lets developers take performance to the next level and make content browsing experiences lightning fast. AMP pages load four times faster and use 10 times less data. And the, we launched AMP a few months ago, and the response has been tremendous. There are currently 125 million AMP documents out there from over 640,000 unique domains. And AMP is all about the web. AMP content is nothing but HTML and JavaScript. And it's really amazing that AMP shows what is possible with performance on the web platform. So we've talked about how to make experiences fast. The second pillar of mobile web success is to deepen the engagement. And this is all about creating polished app experiences, experiences that are resilient to network conditions, whether you're offline or just have a flaky network. 
Progressive web apps enable these engaging experiences through a key piece of underlying technology called service workers. And service workers provide full client-side control over fetching and caching. And using progressive workers and progressive, uh, using service workers and progressive web apps, you can build really polished app experiences. Take the case of Gelanticus, a tech review site in Indonesia. I've got a link to Gelanticus and, a, a, and an icon on my homepage to Gelanticus's progressive web app. And when I tap that icon, what I see is Gelanticus shows me a splash screen, which is really smooth and polished, and then it loads up in full screen mode. And as I use navigate around, you can see that the transitions and animations are rock solid. It's a really polished experience. And if you notice, there's no Chrome UI here. This is all Gelanticus's progressive web app. Progressive web apps and service workers also enable you to make your app work really well offline. Let's take the example of Flipkart, a leading e-commerce retailer in India. And they've built an awesome progressive web app, and it works really well offline. So if I go to flipkart.com, and I go offline, I go offline there, you'll see that Flipkart cleverly changes the UI to grayscale to indicate to the user that I'm offline. But the user can continue to navigate around in the app and even view cached content. It's a very seamless experience. Now, progressive web apps and AMP work really well together. And the Washington Post has put together a really cool uh, in, uh, uh, integration as well. So to show you this in action, let me invite up on stage David Merrill, Senior Product Manager from the Washington Post. All right. Thanks, Rahul. Uh, we are really excited at The Post to be able to show you guys today some new investments we've been making in the mobile web space. Um, as pretty much everyone here probably knows, we joined dozens of other publishers and Google earlier this year with the launch of AMP. And we've been thrilled with the results so far. AMP lived up to its name. Our AMP files, we see those articles load an average of 400 milliseconds. And that is a huge gain over the traditional mobile web. One of the great benefits of being with AMP right at launch is we can see the metrics on our end about the load times, and we can also see exactly how users are reacting to them. And not surprisingly, users love it. They love the speed. Before AMP, 51% of mobile users who visited the Washington Post from Google search returned within seven days. Now, with AMP, that number is up to 63%. And we give a huge amount of credit to the speed of AMP for that, um, that data there. So we know that users love speed. We know that we love speed because it's easier for us and because it makes our users happy. But the question that faces publishers today is, how can we build engaging and fast experiences that will build relationships with users beyond the search carousel? Because we get people once or twice a week from search. We'd love to convert those people three or four times a week every day using new experiences. So we took what we learned with AMP, and we started working on a progressive web app. And I am thrilled today to be able to show you guys what that looks like. So could we get the? Uh, phone up on the screens. All right. All right. Are we good? All right, great. So I'm going to find us a Washington Post AMP article now. And uh, live demos of search can always be a little bit dicey, because you don't know what the algorithm is going to turn up. Ah, but here we go. We've got a Washington Post AMP story right here. I'm going to tap into it. Everyone here can see it loads really fast. Now, what you can't see happening on this AMP article right now is we're using a service worker to install a very small piece of progressive web app code into the Chrome browser so that we can very quickly and seamlessly upgrade this user to a more rich, engaging experience. So for the purposes of the demo, we put a link straight to the progressive web app at the top of the menu. In the future, we're looking at testing having all links within AMP open to this progressive experience because users will have that app already installed. So we'll go into the app now. Here it is. 
You can see that loaded really fast. We've got load times here under a second when coming from the AMP page. So once I'm in the app, we focused on making a really smooth scrolling experience. So it feels very native, even though this is obviously the web. You can even see at the top, we're on WashingtonPost.com domain. And as we scroll through articles here, we used the ideas and the principles of AMP to make these pages very light. And then we added on the caching ability of service workers and the progressive web app to pre-cache pieces of the article before you even get there. And thanks to that, we have brought load times within this PWA down to 80 milliseconds for each article. And uh, we were a little surprised we got it down that low. We're certainly happy about it. We think the users are going to love it. So that pre-caching that the PWA gives us also lets us solve another really important user experience issue that every one of the smartphone faces. And that is, what happens when you go offline? Now, in DC, lots of people take the metro to work. Metro goes above ground, goes underground. You're in and out of cell service. So to show you what we do there, let's go to airplane mode. So now, just like regular website, the article I'm on still works. But because I've used the progressive web to cache the content around it, I can keep reading new articles even though I'm offline. Mm -hmm. Right, so that is our new progressive web experience that we're testing now. Um, I think it really brings together the power of the web in a great way. We've got that lightning fast first load from AMP, followed up by using the service worker and the progressive web app to do a seamless, really fast upgrade to user experience that we hope will get people coming back again and again to the Washington Post. So um, I really think this is going to help bring our journalism to people all over the world and make it more accessible. And we're really happy about that. So I would invite all of you to check it out. You can get it today on your phones. If you go to any AMP article, either through Google Search or Google News, like I just did, and go to the menu, you can go to the PWA. Or you can also go to WashingtonPost.com slash PWA on your phones. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you, David. That was awesome. So I hope by now you're convinced that it's possible to build an experience on the mobile web that is fast and engaging. And this should get you lots and lots of visitors, because the web does have broad reach. So let's turn our attention to the third pillar for mobile web success, which is how we take all those visitors and convert them into loyal users. Now, there's something you may have noticed about mobile. Typing on mobile is hard. This happens to me more times a day than I, than I feel comfortable admitting in public. But because typing on mobile is hard, asking users to sign in is hard. And in fact, we've seen that if a user doesn't sign in correctly the first time, maybe because they mistyped their credentials, 92% of them will give up rather than have to retype their credentials again. And we do our bit in Chrome to try and help these users. We have a password manager feature. And through the password manager feature, we try and help users by auto-filling sign-in fields. And in fact, using our password manager feature, we help users sign in over 8 billion times every single month. So that's great. We're helping our users. But we asked ourselves, what if we could do it better? And we realized that, yes, we can do it better. We can do it better if we turn the reins over to you, the developer, and give you control over the experience. So in that spirit, I'm very pleased to announce the launch of the Credential Manager API, which does just that. This API lets you interact with safe credentials inside the browser, and it even works with federated sign-ins. Now, one company that's using this API is Kayak. And Kayak is a travel company. And it's important to them that their users be signed in so they can keep track of travel information across devices and platforms. And using this API, Kayak users who have saved their credentials in Chrome will never need to retype them again. And so a user who goes to Kayak 
and taps the sign in button. will see a prompt to select the credential they want to sign in with, and that's it. They're signed in. One tap, and you're in. It's a really smooth experience. What's even cooler, yeah. What's even cooler is that Kayak can remember that the user used those credentials to sign in, so the next time the user goes back to Kayak, Kayak can just sign that user in automatically. And so I'm launching up the Kayak website. And you'll see a little blue bar at the bottom that is just saying, hey, we're signing you in. So the user knows what's going on. But then the user is signed in. The user had to do nothing, zero taps. So it's a really smooth experience. So now in addition to helping users sign in, we also want to help users complete transactions on the web, to pay for things on the web. And to set this problem up, there's just one number you need to know, which is 66%. There's a good 66% and a bad 66%. So the good news is that 66% of mobile commerce happens on the mobile web. So the mobile web is critically important for commerce. On the other hand, conversions on the mobile web happen at a rate that's 66% lower than the desktop web. So the mobile web is critically important for commerce, but it's also very inefficient. And we all know why that is. Completing a transaction on the mobile web is hard. There are many forms to fill out, there are many screens to go through, and many opportunities for the user to drop off. And again, in Chrome, we try our bit to do our bit to help users. For example, we have our autofill feature, and we try and fill in form fields to help the user through the flow. And in fact, our studies have shown that users on Android who use autofill, complete transactions and form submissions on the web, 25% higher rates than other users. So that's great. We're helping our users. But again, in the spirit of the Credential Manager API, we asked ourselves, what if we could do it better? And again, we realize, yes, we can do it better. We can do it better if we turn the reins over to you, the developer, and we gave you complete control over the experience. And so I'm really excited to announce the launch of the Web Payments API, a new API that brings one tap checkout to the web for the first time ever. This is awesome. So one company that is look, making use of this API to streamline their checkout flow is Shopify. So this, let's take a look at what that flow looks like. So here a user is using Shopify, and they've got some items in their shopping cart, and they're ready to check out. And when the user hits checkout, Shopify issues a payment request API call to the browser to pre-fill all of the information needed to complete the transaction. So rather than the user having to go through a bunch of form fields and a bunch of screens, the user sees this, which is everything they need to complete this transaction. And when the user hits pay, the transaction is done. That's it. One tap, and the transaction is done. And this example, I showed you this working with a credit card. But this API also works with Android Pay. So we're bringing Android Pay right into the browser through this API as well. And the flow is exactly the same. And in the future, this will work on all other types of payment applications also. And with all of these APIs, we're working right out in the open, and we're collaborating closely across all our different browser vendors as well. So we talked about making experiences fast, making them engaging, converting visitors into users. So let's look at the fourth pillar for mobile web success, which is how do we then retain those users and re-engage with them at the right times? Now, one big thing that changed in the shift to mobile was the importance of push-based interactions. We have these devices with us all the time, and we rely on push notifications to stay up to date on the things that we care about. 
And this is why we're excited about push notifications for the web. These work exactly as you would expect. Once a user opts in to receiving notifications from your site, they will get those notifications. And this, they'll get them whether or not the site is open or whether or not the browser is open. And they show up exactly where users expect, them to see, expect to see them, on the notifications uh, tray or on the lock screen. Now, one company that is making use of push notifications is a company called Jumia, a large e-commerce provider in Africa. And Jumia was trying to figure out how to solve a problem they had with abandoned shopping carts. And so they turned to progressive web apps, and they implemented push notifications for the web as a way to re-engage those users who had abandoned shopping carts. And this is early days, but their results have been spectacular. In fact, Jumia reports that they see a nine-fold increase in conversions of abandoned shopping carts for users who come in through push notifications. So well done, Jumia. This is the kind of success that we love to see. And it's not just Jumia. Many companies are uh, implementing and rolling out push notifications and seeing success. Last November at Chrome Dev Summit, we announced that we were sending out 350 million push notifications every day across mobile and desktop. And today, I'm pleased to report, less than six months later, that number has grown to 10 billion push notifications every single day. And it continues to grow. Amazing. So there you have it, the four pillars for mobile web success. Accelerate the experience, make it engaging, immersive, and polished, convert visitors into users, and then retain and re-engage those users at the right times. And to show you an example of a great progressive web app, one that has made very effective use of these four pillars, let me invite up on stage Hannes Schwager, head of mobile at Air Berlin. Thanks for having me. Uh, hi, everyone. For those not familiar with Air Berlin, we are Germany's second largest airline. We fly to 147 destinations worldwide, including San Francisco since May. And we served over 30 million passengers in 2015. Um, as an airline, we are constantly working on new ways to improve the travel journey, right? Even offline. And it's very exciting to be here today to tell you or to show you how we have been building a progressive web app to improve the customer check-in experience. Like any business, we know that not all of our customers will download the app, especially those who are traveling just once or twice a year. And so I've been looking quite a long time to find a solution how we can improve or how we can make an easy check-in experience via the mobile web, because quite a lot of people are checking via mobile web. So that's why I'm here today to show you what we have built within the last month. And therefore, I booked the flight going to Rome. I love going to Rome. And I booked it a couple of weeks ago, and Evelyn was asking me if I want to accept push notifications via the mobile web, and say, well, yes, why not? Just give me a reminder when check-in is open. So let's see if it worked. So you can see. Oh, your check-in is ready. It worked out. There it is. Tapping on the push notification takes me directly to a page where I have access to all my flight details, where I can just check in by one click. And that's what we're going to do. It really opens up the page very quickly. And just by tapping get the boarding pass, check-in was successful. So now I have my boarding pass right away there, thanks to the progressive web app. And 
I can see, OK, there are some journey details. OK, check in, done. Boarding, 30 minutes. Just check to be ready for security. And snacks and drinks will be served. Ah, good to know. And Evelyn is asking me at the home screen. I think it's, it was just a great experience what I had. And I'm traveling tomorrow to Rome. So it's fine to add it to home screen, because then I have much faster access to all my Air Berlin informations, right? But it's not only having a cool and convenient experience with the push notification for the check-in. It's, it's more. It's being there for the customer throughout the whole journey. So as all of you know that often on, in, on airports, the internet is very bad, or you don't have any connectivity. You are in a rush. You're in a hurry. And not sure if you can have access to the internet. So therefore, I go for airplane mode to say, OK, I'm offline. And now I have the possibility to get back via the home screen icon in full screen mode. right? So and you've seen it loaded very, very quickly. And I have all my details there, all critical content. I can explore destination, even in offline mode, can read what I can do in Rome, get some information about Rome. And most important thing is I have access to my porting pass. And I think we don't need to do screenshots anymore of our porting pass being sure that I have it with me, right? I do it as well. So, and I think with, with that, we really can cancel that and be sure having it right, right away with you. Thanks to this. <laughs> so thanks to the progressive web app and service worker, we've been able to improve the journey for all our customers, and not only those who installed our app. And the check-in is just a first step, I would say. It's we're already thinking of rolling out the technology to other critical parts of the travel journey. And I'm very happy to say that we're going to roll out this version within the next weeks to our users. And a big thanks to the team who did a very good job within the last couple of weeks. Thank you. <laughs> thanks. Thank you, Hannes. That was great. More and more companies are deploying progressive web apps and seeing success. Take Sumo. This is Japan's largest real estate site. And they recently deployed a progressive web app and saw huge improvements in speed and re-engagement. In fact, Sumo reports that they were able to reduce their page load times by 75%. And then when they added push notifications as a way to re-engage users by sending them information about new real estate listings that they might care about, they saw a 31% open rate on those notifications. It's truly astounding. This is great success. So well done, Sumo. This is the kind of success we love to see. <laughs> I'll take AliExpress, a leading global online marketplace. And they recently deployed a progressive web app as well. And they report increased engagement across all browsers, across all platforms. In fact, AliExpress says that the time spent in their app went up by 74%, and they saw an 82% increase in conversions on iOS. So these investments make sense across all browsers, across all platforms, not just Chrome. And the momentum continues to grow. More and more companies are deploying progressive web apps and seeing success. And I hope that all of you, when you leave Google I.O., will go out and do the same. Now, we're not done yet. The web will continue to evolve as the world of computing evolves. And here on the Chrome team, we're working on a long list of exciting new projects. So let me take the next six hours and walk through each of these <laughs> in a lot of detail. I see people heading for the exits. No, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. But let me give you two examples uh, just to give you a flavor for the kinds of things you're working on. We're working on the physical web. 
The physical web is a way to bring the web, to extend the web to objects around us. Wouldn't it be cool if you got on a bus and you could get the bus schedule available on your phone instantly right when you needed it? This is possible today in public buses across London using the physical web. And more generally, the physical web is a way for objects to broadcast URLs to us and for us to use those URLs to interact with those objects right on demand when we need it. We're also working on WebAssembly. WebAssembly is an ambitious effort across many different browser vendors to define a new low-level language, one that runs at native speeds, but securely and on the web. It's still early days, but we're really excited about the potential here for unlocking new high-performance cases, use cases, things from gaming to media to scientific computing, and who knows what else. So as we work on improving the mobile web today, and as we look to the future, there's one key thing to remember, which is that we're all in this together. My session is almost over, but this conversation is not over. This conversation is just getting started. We're going to have a series of events throughout the remainder of this year all across the world as part of the Progressive Web Apps Roadshow. And there's a Dev Summit in Amsterdam next month, and there's a registration link you can use to sign up. And if you can't make one of these events, we are active and engaged on Twitter, on Stack Overflow, on GitHub, and we have a developer portal with a lot more information. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to work with you. We'd love to help you be successful. And of course, we work collaboratively across all the different browser vendors. Ultimately, it's up to all of us, browser vendors and web developers, to write the future of the web. So go out there and build a great progressive web app. The future of the mobile web looks very, very bright indeed. Thank you.